Welcome to Larry's Library. This week what I've got for you is The Incredible Hulk Omnibus Volume 2. I finally finished reading it. Uh, I, I gotta say, you know, these uh, silver slash bronze age books take a lot longer to read because you've got a lot more smaller panels with a lot more text involved. The, uh, the list price on this MSRP is $100, but of course don't be a chump. Don't, don't pay $100. Get it from a good uh, discounter like InStockTrades.com, my favorite, and that's where I got mine. And as the time of this shooting, you could still get it for $62 at IST. So if you're uh, thinking about getting it, go get it there while it is in stock. So the writers on this one are Stan Lee, Roy Thomas, uh, Gary Friedrich, Bill Everett, and Archie Goodwin. But the majority of the issues here are written by Roy Thomas. Uh, and then the next largest amount would be Stan Lee. Now the art... Now, there are a lot of artists involved in this, but I'm not going to read them all. But the main artists here, in my notes here, are um, Herb Trimpey and Marie Severin. They do the majority of the art throughout the, the whole series here, the whole volume. This one collects and reprints Incredible Hulk, the original series, uh, issues 103 all the way through 134 straight, as well as Annual 1. Now, this is pretty early Herb Trimpey art, so it starts out a little rough. And you see him evolve as an artist. His his figure work gets better and better and better as it goes along. Uh, yeah, I, I, there's some awkward looking uh, figures there in, in certain ones. It's very uneven. I, I wish I knew exactly how old he was when he started doing this because I feel like he was pretty young. Uh, definitely uh, early part of his career. And as I said, he just gets better and better. And there are a number of inkers used throughout this. I mean a ton, including him uh, inking his own work. So I've made, I made notes with this one as I was reading it. I, I kept my, uh, my phone right there and I made a lot of notes as I read through this volume. Uh, and it, like I said, it took a while because small panels, lots of text. But in this one, you see Stan Lee hand the reins over to Roy Thomas in writing. Because uh, up to this point, Stan Lee had done almost all of the writing himself. Now, in between there, you got a few issues written by Gary Friedrich which I gotta say, I thought they were terrible. Uh, I, I, I know Friedrich is uh, kind of a legendary writer. I think he's one of the main creators of the, the ghost rider as it, uh, the more, uh, the motorcycle ghost rider, not the, the horse one, you know what I mean. Uh, the, uh, yeah, so, and I like the work he did there. But yeah, his Incredible Hulk issues were not great. And I'm guessing that Stan must have realized that because it wasn't long after that, I think he only did two or three in, in between, uh, he handed the book over to Roy Thomas and it was much improved. And Roy just got better and better too as he got more, um, as he figured out what he wanted to do with the character. And it went into some directions that I don't think the book had ever been in before. And as I said, I did make some notes, so I'll try to uh, read through some of these. Uh, so Herb Trimpey does two text pieces in here, which I think were part of a, some kind of, probably the Marvel Masterworks or maybe a, some trade paperbacks or maybe both. And they're reprinted in here in the appropriate slots before the, the sections that apply to it. And one thing I noted here in my notes here is that he was extremely hard on himself. He really trashed his own work, very self-deprecating. I kind of hated to see it in a way because I, I've always had a big appreciation for Herb Trimpey, especially because of his, uh, this Godzilla, you know, uh, the Marvel Godzilla stuff he did, was, I thought was fantastic. But he's a very humble guy, and he, like I said, he made fun of his own work a lot. He, he noted that he had lots of silly hand gestures and um, pointing, and, and I gotta say, he was right. He, he, I mean, he was a little overly hard on himself, but, but reading through them, especially those early Hulks, there was a lot of stuff like this stop or this and then I mean just everybody doing these very over the top gestures it was strange it was like you know people would just pose like this there's a lot of this going on and, you know I, I don't know it was weird a lot of that happened <laughs> very exaggerated stilty you know doing that uh, he grew out of it thankfully because <laughs> once you've seen those poses 10 or 12 times, it got really old. And it wasn't the Hulk doing those. It was villains, typically. You know, this kind of stuff. Very strange. And then he went through this period where he didn't draw eyeballs. 
two or three issues in a row where he would just darken the, the eyes, you know, and, and it would look, it almost looked like they had their eyes closed, you know. And even the Hulk, no eyeballs, just shaded through. He got out of that phase too. <laughs> I think it was because he was insecure as an artist. He, he was afraid that his eyes looked dumb maybe, so he would just shade through them. So, yeah, I don't know. But uh, I think it was a confidence thing. And as he got more confidence, his art got better. He got a lot better and he started actually seeing eyeballs. And he relied less on these strange, you know, gestures. <laughs> so that was one thing I noted. And he noted it himself. But so okay, let's see. Uh, issue 117 in here. Um, Trimpy starts inking himself. And, and with issue 117, he was doing this John Severin inks. Uh, sort of an imitation of John Severin. It was beautiful. It actually worked. He was really good at it. I'm thinking it, inking himself like that, that heavily, you know, uh, and mimicking someone else's style at the same time must have been slow because he didn't keep this up forever. Um, in 118, uh, one of my all-time favorite covers, this shows Lady Dorma um, on the cover there and the Hulk is battling Submariner. It, beautiful cover. I have a reproduction somewhere okay I used to have a reproduction on the wall but I don't anymore I would love to have a poster of that I need to look into that but I'll, I'll show a scan for sure so in that issue in 118 Lady Dorma rescues Bruce Banner and brings him to Atlantis yeah and uh, Banner turns into the Hulk and has a huge battle with Namor down below in Atlantis so that's pretty cool that, that was a standout uh, issue I think and then you know, in 119, in 117 and 118, he's he's aping John Severin inks over his own pencils. Beautiful stuff. And then in 119, he is doing his own inks, but in the style of Jack Davis. And, and it's pretty nice, too. I, I didn't like that quite as much as when he was aping uh, John Severin, but it's pretty good. And then I got another one here. In uh, issue 123, Banner and Reed Richards develop a cure that allows him to control the transformations and regain his, he retains his intelligence and his personality even when he's hulked out. And I think this is the first time that had ever been done. Now we've seen that done a lot in later eras of, of Incredible Hulk, for sure. Uh, most notably the Peter David era, you know, and uh, the, uh, the Grey Hulk, the Mr. Fix-It and Maestro and other things that have been done there. I mean, that's been done a lot, we're used to that. but. The readers at this time were not used to that at all. That had never happened. It had always been Hulk smash, you know. And all of a sudden, he's able to control his transformations. And that was a Roy Thomas uh, idea and a Roy Thomas story. So that was pretty cool. It was quite something to see that happen in this early of a book. You know. In issue 127, it's Roy Thomas' story, uh, The Hulk Meets Mogol, M-O-G-O-L. And of course, he battles him at first, and then he ends up, being a, uh, having a friend. And that's one thing that the Roy Thomas Hulk is always in search of is ha trying to have a friend, you know, and, and he just, he can't ever seem to get a friend. And, and when he does get someone that he thinks is his friend, it's almost always some sort of betrayal. It's almost always a trap. And in this case, it turns out Mogul is an android, a robot. But Hulk didn't know that. And when he finds out, well, I'm not going to spoil it for you because it is a powerful story with a just a tragic ending. And uh, it, it might be the closest thing to a tearjerker that is in this particular volume. But yeah, it, it's really well done. Great Roy Thomas story there. In issue 130, Banner and the Hulk are separated physically. And another great Roy Thomas story, Roy Thomas concept, where they're, they're actually separated. I won't, I won't say how, you have to read the issue, but they are physically separated into two separate beings. The Hulk and Banner are existing physically at the same time separately. I mean, it's just, it's, it's pretty wild. Now, I don't know if that's happened since. Pro I'm thinking it probably has. I haven't read the entire Hulk run. I mean, who could, right? I mean, some, someone has probably. Some of you may have, but I have not. Not yet. Not that I will, but I'm working on the Peter David run also. But anyway, I digress. So that happened in here, and it made me think, it made me think about um, quantum physics a little bit, and quantum entanglement, how particles can be entangled even across great distances. And I, uh, I, every now and then I go down the rabbit, rabbit hole of quantum physics and I watch a lot of uh, sort of educational videos on YouTube. So it's kind of a fascination of mine. 
And while Roy Thomas didn't mention quantum mechanics or quantum entanglement, that it is exactly what that made me think of. So I thought that was kind of cool. Then in issue 131, we have John Severin actually inking Herb Trimpey pencils. Not, you know, Herb Trimpey mimicking Severin, but John Severin comes in and starts inking uh, Trimpey's pencils, and it is spectacular. John Severin's one of the greatest inkers out there. Uh, it, him and Marie Severin both are fantastic. And yeah, John Severin comes in with that issue, and superb. I'll, I'll show some samples of that for sure. So the last issue in this, this collection is issue 134. So that's the cover that I chose when I, when I bought my uh, Omnibus. I, mean, I had like three different choices, two or three. And I chose this one. And yeah, that's the cover issue 134. And in this story, Sal Buscema is inking. And it looks really good. This is a great story by Roy Thomas. The Hulk ends up uh, freeing this small uh, Mediterranean country from a dictator. And there's a little girl in it, which is shades of the Frankens the original uh, Frankenstein film um, where uh, he comes upon the girl by a pond and she's throwing flowers and he uh, in the Frankenstein movie I'm talking about now <laughs> I'm all over the place I know had too much coffee today baby but and she's tossing the petals in the water and so uh, the Frankenstein character thinks well the girl is pretty and the flowers pretty and the flowers float on the water so he throws the girl in tragically you know she drowns I mean, that doesn't happen here, thankfully, but I think, um, in fact, in one of Roy Thomas' intros, he mentions that he meant to draw uh, those similarities between the Frankenstein film and the Hulk in those scenes there where the girl's by the pond standing there with flowers, and he comes up, and the Hulk comes up and meets her. Like I said, thankfully, he does not throw her in the lake, so <laughs> there you go. But yeah, this was a great story, and it was a great way to end this uh, omnibus. See, all in all, I, I easily give this one an 8 out of 10. I know I give a ton of 8s, but, you know, like I said, it's a good spot that stuff can sit in. Where I don't, the only flaws with this is the very uneven art. You know, as you've seen, Herb Trimpey evolve and all the different changes with the inkers and his style changing from issue to issue. It, it's fun to see as a, as a comic art fan that I am, but it is a little disconcerting at times, and it, it stops this from getting a 10 out of 10. And for that reason, it's a, it's an 8 out of 10 for me. And also the Gary Frederick uh, uh, scripted issues are not great at all. No, not great. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so this one sits at an 8 out of 10 for me. And it is still available if you want to pick this up. Uh, do yourself a favor. If you're a Hulk fan, yep, you'll probably want to get this. So I hope you like taking a look at this one. I had a lot of fun reading it. It took a while to get through, but, but yeah, I, I loved it. Hit the thumbs up if you like this one. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll catch you next time.